Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to Conversations with My Higher Self. Today, we are talking about life path number nine. I know that there are a lot of you that have been waiting for this episode. So, um, you know, this is the completion of our series on life path numbers, and I could not be more excited. Uh, before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items. If you're still not meditating with me on our Sacred Universe podcast, you are massively missing out. I wholeheartedly invite you to join me in that beautiful space and that healing space. I tend to upload guided journeys and meditations on that podcast weekly on Sundays. Yeah, and those are very transformative. Those are very healing. And yeah, I'm just excited to share those with you. And then for those of you that have been curious about my book, 72 Keys to Manifestation or An Ancient Path of a Modern Day Alchemist, it is available on Audible as an audiobook. And I've been getting a lot of great feedback um, about the audio format. So if you have been curious about it, check it out. Also, if you have a paperback version or a hardcover or an ebook, but you've been struggling with the meditation parts, um, the audiobook is actually really good for that because we're guiding you through those experiences. So come check it out on Audible. All righty. And now without further ado, I bring to you life path number nine. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys, for those of you that have shown up here as a life path number nine, you are such a powerhouse. There are three alchemical life paths. I like to I classify them as alchemical. Life path three, life path six, and life path nine, of which nine is the most mature one, of which nine is the most potent one, of which nine is the most masterful one. Nine is one of the numbers of completion. Now, there are many digits, there are many numbers in numerology that signify completion, a wholeness, if you will. Seven is a smaller number of completion. Nine is a middle number of completion. Twelve is the final number of completion, if you will. And as you well know, um, I divide all of incarnations into two parts. Your life as usual or run of the mill incarnations. Sometimes people get offended when I call them run of the mill. Run of the mill doesn't mean bad or mundane. It just means it usually prepares you for a master incarnation. And then there are, so there are th nine uh, traditional incarnations, if you will. And then there are three master incarnations. However, of the run of the mill incarnations and life paths one through nine, nine is certainly the pinnacle. Souls usually, when before undertaking life path nine, they undertake paths one through eight at least once as they're prepping to um, undertake a life path nine. And that is because it's actually not so easy to be a master alchemist. Very often, those with the life path nine have a very, very high bar for themselves. It's a high bar for excellence. Um, they tend to be hardworking. It is a high bar for what they want to be in life, how many people they want to help, etc. And it goes above and beyond perfectionism. But life path number nine is both challenging as well as beautiful uh, because most people that end up undertaking life path nine have come such a long way and they're completing their circle. And as such, there are a lot of things that are going right for them. For instance, one of the things that I love about life, life path nine is that they tend to be the masters of their own journey. They tend to be their own jewelry, if you will, their own executioner, their own North Star. And that is just so beautiful. Um, life path number nine, very early in life, they, they either discover a calling or they discover an interest or they discover a passion of theirs that is just so innate, that runs so deep inside of them, that really speaks to their soul. And so very often, uh, life path nine doesn't have to do quite as much soul searching as some of the other life paths. Also very interesting, from very early age, life path nine is, is a little bit of a sage. And they are, these are the, ki the kids that feel so much older than their age. It's almost like they wake, uh, you know, they um, are born adults in some ways. Um, life path nine is extremely responsible. Uh, sometimes it feels like there's the responsibility of the entire world upon their shoulders. Another beautiful thing about a life path nine is, like I said, they're their own North Star. What does that mean? A lot of 
people when they come into an incarnation, a lot of souls, I should say. Um, for the first, let's say, decade or so of, of, of your life, of their life, most people would look upon their parents as a measure of success or as a means of understanding whether um, they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. So in other words, for most people, their barometer for success and their barometer of how good versus bad they are is not themselves, but it's other people. Life path nine is very, very different. From the very early age, they find their center and they have such a well-developed center, such a well-developed core. They have a really good understanding of who they are. And because of that, it is very hard for society or parental structure, you know, parental structure, structures, familial structures to kind of like sway them off their axis. And um, that is why very often uh, Life Path 9 is going to have a tug or a pull that they follow. So, you know, their parents may want them to do one thing, but Life Path 9 tends to follow their heart um, over societal blueprints. And so because of that, because of that, despite the fact that Life Path 9 is very challenging, it is, you know, it takes a lot to walk the path of completion. It is also one of those paths that tends to be happier than others because it tends to follow its own blueprint. It tends to sing to the song of its own drum as opposed to being distracted by the things that society is telling you to want at face value. So again, for Life Path 9, if you are a Life Path 9, you have a very strong, very well-developed core. And because of that, you're actually perceived as very stable, very dependable, very trustworthy, very honest by others. So people gravitate towards you as if you were this center or core or you know someone they could either follow or believe in. And so you tend to be that grounding energy in people's lives. Sometimes when you befriend somebody um, who has had maybe a tumultuous past or, you know, some of the right things didn't happen for them, you're going to be able to balance their energy in a way that their life is stabilized, st stabilized and they're able to move on to um, smoother seas, calmer, uh, calmer seas, better, easier sailing. Because of that, you're actually a very, very resourceful friend. But also, as a life path nine, most, most life path nines select a cause for themselves, like a mission that their whole incarnation is going to re revolve around. And they're very dead set on a set of values that they believe in. So very often, a life path nine is very opinionated and very set in their own ways, but not in a stubborn way, but in a way of somebody who's been there, done that, and just knows better. Nines feel very strong about the cause that they believe they came here to pursue or foster. Um, and that cause can be really, really different. It doesn't have to be humanitarian or altruistic, but they believe in something and they can put their whole life towards achieving the outcome that they believe in. Nines are very patient. Nines are very forward-looking. They are both strategic and tactical, meaning they have the foresight. That's another beautiful thing about the nine. Um, they have the foresight and they're both able to kind of like zoom out and almost like race to the level of the eagle that is soaring above the, the terrain, uh, the forest. But they're also able to dive deep and, and zoom in when needed and understand all the details. Nines tend to be both intellectual and heart-led. So they're, they have the, um, every alchemical number has both the masculine and the feminine energies. And what is beautiful about the nine is it is the pinnacle of alchemical expression, which means that they tend to be really good at combining their masculinity with their femininity. They're usually not one or the other. So let's say if they're very smart and very ambitious career-wise, you know, from the masculine perspective, they will also have just as much heart and intention and intuition um, from the feminine side, right? So it's a very, very balanced life path because of that very interesting as well. Nines tend to um, be very introspective, tend to be very thoughtful in their communication, and they tend to be very insightful. They're able to take a lot of information and a lot of factoids and, and, and just um, incoming um, 
pieces of um, of info and then structure it in a way that others can easily understand. That is why very often nines actually created and jump-started whole systems of thought and new philosophies. And, um, you know, they tend to be good at science as well. But at the same time, nines can just as easily be an artist and um, just create something that speaks to their soul, right? So where I'm going with this is there's not one path that defines a nine. What defines a nine is the high bar that they set for themselves and how much they are willing to sacrifice to get to where they're trying to go. Nines are extremely resilient. They have an incredible amount of stamina. They don't give up easily. And again, not from the uh, perspective of being stubborn, but from the perspective of believing in themselves. Very often nines would come with a very good, healthy uh, levels of self-confidence, or even if they are not as confident as they'd like to be, the world just cannot get them down. If the world knocks them down, they just get up and keep going. And because of that, they tend to get to the outcomes that they are pursuing. They tend to be successful. Nines are very deliberate. There's usually like a step-by-step -step process. There is a method to their madness. That's why I said that they're also very, very good tacticians. They know how to plan their day so as to achieve the outcomes that they want. They're very often very particular. You're going to be tight pressed to find a life path nine that just doesn't care. They tend to be very specific. Remember, right? They have been on a very long path before even being able to, to take on the nine life path. So usually that they have tried a whole array of occupations and relationships and things in life. And so by the time you reach a life path nine, you usually have a very good grasp on what it is that you like, what it is that you don't like, what your values are, where do you draw the line, what your boundaries are, what you can tolerate and what you cannot tolerate. Because of that, they tend to be, like I said, very particular. And sometimes they can be very ruthless around cutting things that no longer belong or cutting things out that no longer resonate with them. For a nine, compared to some other uh, life path numbers, it is easier to let go of old relationships and friendships that no longer serve them or who they are meant to be in the world. At the same time, nines are very open to possibility. And in fact, usually nines are not excited by small things, small tasks, like little mundane, you know, uh, things. They kind of need to believe in something bigger. And so very often they undertake something that's very ambitious and then they work hard to achieve it. And they're quite unstoppable. But at the same time, there's a lot of patience with number nine, which is quite uncharacteristic of uh, the homo sapiens species as a whole. I would say nines have learned how just how viscose, just how slow a third dimensional reality is. And so by the time they get to life path nine, they're incredibly patient. Let us look at the challenges of the life path nine. One of the challenges of the life path nine is taking on too much responsibility. And that is one of the pet peeves of, of a nine. They like responsibility. They are able to handle responsibility very well. Usually it's the responsible child in the family, right? So if it is, you know, oh, if you are a life path nine, you're one of many children in the family you tend to be the one that everybody looks up to, you know, to solve their issues. If, you know, if, if you're a little bit older, you know, your siblings may be borrowing money from you or maybe coming to you for advice, you know, in all kinds of different areas of life, whether that is finances or relationships or what have you, you're like the dependable one, right? You're the one that, you know, may be the family glue, like where you gather everybody together. You're the one that doesn't cancel like meetings last time. Like you're the one that is always going to show up, always going to step up. And um, because of that, right, sometimes people may take advantage of you um, just because of how responsible you are. And so one of the challenges of life, life path nine is taking on too much, taking on the stuff that belongs to you and taking on the stuff that does not belong to you. Because of like a very common ailment for life path nine are back pains and neck pains. And usually another issue that you guys may be experiencing is different misalignments around your spinal cord, right? Because anytime you take up a take upon a load that does not belong to you, it impacts your spinal cord, it impacts your posture, and then of course from there impacts everything else. Um, so 
my big, big, big piece of advice for a Life Path 9 is get good at distinguishing what responsibility is yours to carry and what responsibility is not yours. There's a little bit of a savior complex with Life Path 9, again, because they they feel responsible for everything and everyone. And also they have very big hearts and they're very communal. Like you're going to be tight pressed to find a Life Path 9 that doesn't care about others doesn't care about society, doesn't care about their neighbor, doesn't care about their nation. These are caring people. These are people that believe believe in the greater good. These are the people that are committed to making uh, the life of others better. These are the people that, you know, they are the activists, the activists, they are into environment, you know, like they are just like the exemplary kind of citizen in, in some ways, right? And of course, the challenge for them is to make sure that Whatever they do, they don't try to solve the world's issues, uh, or, or at least not all of them at once, right? There, you know, it tends to be, there's definitely a tendency with nines to carry more than they can handle, which is why, you know, um, all, all of those symptoms around health can arise as well. So just get really, really good at carrying your own load and get extremely ruthless around cutting out all of the things that you're not meant to carry. Another thing around responsibility, there is a tendency of a life path nine to be a caretaker and sometimes to like a crazy degree. It could um, it could manifest itself in, in a form of this could be a person with many pets. You know, like sometimes people like with like four cats and like three dogs, very often life path nine, just because they're like, okay, they like bigger families, they like like um, a lot of people, and they like a lot of happening. And so they tend to accumulate pets, and they tend to have large groups of friends. There's like just a lot of them in a good way. Uh, but at the same time, they very often have people that depend on them, and not always in a healthy way, right? They just tend to allow the people to not even take advantage of them, but like very often they would find themselves being caretakers or providers, including financially for others. And whether they kind of signed up for it or not, you know, whether they're paying rent for like a friend or like their friend is living in their couch, you know, that could be like a common way of uh, for this to happen. Or like I said, their sibling always borrowing money from them, or somehow they just end up like being that caretaker um, for one or multiple people and you know it, it may or may not be healthy depending on what what the situation looks like so boundary issues specifically around caretaking that's not something that a life path nine has you know that is definitely a challenge and if you have too many people that are kind of like leeching off of you or that you're supporting it could be like let's say you have a significant other that just chooses not to work and, and, and you're the only breadwinner in a family, something along those lines. That's like a very common trend for nines because they have that savior archetype. One thing you would notice is like everybody else, you have a very finite energy stream. And the more you have um, in your life of those people that are kind of like using your resource, the less of your resource you have to achieve that which you came here to achieve. Very often for a life path nine, there's a very clear end game. Not that there isn't for other life paths, but for nine, it's even more so. It's like there is a magnetic pull. It's like there is a lot of gravity to that end game. And for number nine, it is extremely important to achieve that end game. By the way, that end game could be extremely different. Some nines pursue the peace of mind and that, you know, that peace of mind is their final attainment. Some nines would pursue a heart to heart, soul to soul romantic relationship and and that becomes their pinnacle of existence. Some nines may pursue creating a business that is a certain size or a certain serving people in a certain way, right? A lot of nines would pursue a cause and they're not going to stop until they see that cause to fruition, right? But it is very important for a nine to not only know what their, you know, passion is, what their cause is, but also what does the end game look like? And so if you are a life path nine, one of the things that you may benefit from is journaling, journaling around your end game. So literally ask yourself the question, what is my end game? And how do I know that I have arrived at my end game? What would my life look like? 
what would I have if I have achieved my outcome? How would I feel once I have achieved my outcome, right? And that could be a very, very good soul searching exercise for you. Another thing for nines is to watch out for your resource. So you come here with a lot of energy. You come here into this incarnation having very often up to three times more energy than, um, you know, your average human. Because of that, it creates a tendency to do a lot of things. So a uh, life path nine is excitable. And very often you feel like you can take on a lot. You can take a lot on your personal, like in your personal life, you can take a lot in your career. You know, you could just be an exemplary like parent, an exemplary child at the same time. Like, an, uh, you know, you could have a hobby, you could do sports, you could do this, that, and the other thing. And there's just a tendency for the nine is to do a lot. A lot of nines are doers. And in fact, they don't really deal too well with empty space. That is very much a challenge of a life path nine. Like they don't do very well with boredom, so to say, right? Like um, that is why it could be challenging for them to get into meditation practice um, or to communicate with their guides because like they have a very busy mind, similar to life path seven, a little bit different. And because they have that busy mind and they have like an almost like an innate aversion to standing, to sitting still. And in fact, they have a natural proclivity for doing as many things as possible in the span of 24 hours. Um, they may be challenged to get guidance from spirit, despite the fact that there is enough quote unquote experience. And then there is enough of a channel that they themselves have, right? So one of the challenges for life path nine is quieting down your internal dialogue. Your mind can get really, really busy. But for you, the most important thing is connecting your mind and your heart. I have created a YouTube video around mind-heart connection not too long ago. So if you're a Life Path 9, you may enjoy watching that. It has an important practice around how you connect the two, right? All of your decision-making needs to um, happen from a place of alchemy, of uniting uh, and bringing together the two polarities, the masculine and the feminine, right? Anytime you make decisions based on your heart alone or your mind alone, you would end up uh, not feeling fulfilled. So for you, it's very important to maintain that balance. I would also recommend that you watch out for, you know, your hobbies, your lifestyles, your daily rituals, your daily routines, and make sure that you're nurturing both sides, both aspects of who you are as a human. You're both nurturing your inner feminine as well as your inner masculine. So you, what you would benefit from are periods of high activity, so like doing sports, for instance, with uh, periods of things that are more passive or creative, whether that is singing or a particular craft um, or painting uh, or writing poetry or reading poetry, right? So you need to interchange your masculine and your feminine, right? Um, and you are one of those very fluid types where you're able to combine the two so well that, you know, it it. it it actually just uh, appears very natural to others. Uh, but despite the fact that you are this perfect alchemist, you may have a natural tendency to still think that one part of you is more important than the other. That is what we get to the inner critic. So despite the fact that a lot of nines have a really, really good self-esteem, the inner critic is very loud for a nine. And that is very much connected to the fact that your bar is high. Like your bar tends to be higher than for other people. What other people consider success, you don't consider success. And, you know, you know when other people want to stop, you just want to keep going. And so for you, um, your inner critic actually has a tendency to dislike one aspect of you. So usually your inner critic picks like a favorite, quote unquote, aspect of you to pick on. And then that aspect would always get demolished, you know, in your thoughts. And so just be very careful. What aspect of you are you picking on? Your masculine or your feminine? And depending on which aspect of you you're picking on more most of the time, that may be the aspect of you that is suppressed. Now, as a master alchemist, you are meant to not suppress either of your either of the two polarities, right? And in fact, you're meant to bring them forward. So if you feel stuck in, in your life one way or another, if you still feel like you haven't hit the bullseye, if you still feel like you're on the road 
with no, you know, kind of like light, light at the end of the tunnel, ask yourself, which aspect of you are you suppressing the masculine and the feminine? And again, it is very often the part of you that you criticize that is going to be the repressed aspect. And then unchain that aspect, allow that aspect to come forward, be recognized, invite that part of you to join and get a seat at the table, invite that part of you to join the conversation, ask that part of you what it is important to it, what is important to it, ask that part of you, in what way can you support it? What are the things this part of you likes? And then when this part of you joins the table, I want you to imagine how your masculine and your feminine are holding hands and how because of this alchemical dance, there is a circle of light that is created and that circle of light would propel you forward and towards an outcome that you so desire. In general, uh, working with your inner critic could be a very, very good self-care tactic. You would be surprised it's actually easier to work with it than you think. Um, usually inner critic, one of the ways to deal with the inner critic is to do parts work and shadow work. And that's another thing about Life Path 9. You may find that shadow work or parts work is one of your best allies. I have made episodes and YouTube videos about shadow work and parts work before. For you, it is extremely important to pay attention to this modality, healing modality. Why? Here is why. Remember how I told you before nine gets to be a nine, a life path nine, you have to try other incarnations, one through nine, usually one through eight rather. As you go through those, you usually accumulate a lot of parts that at one point got split from the rest of you or from the wholeness that you are uh, because of trauma, drama, and, you know, um, let's, let's, say, uh, l- let's say suppressed emotions, feelings, and thoughts, right? So there have been parts of you that have been scattered um, during those incarnations. And the nine is the coming full circle, is the bringing everything together. And it is you are meant to complete things, right? So um, you're meant to collect all of those shards of yourself and bring them back into the wholeness that you are, right? So you're here to claim your integrity, your fullness. And the only way you can do that is by, again, bringing back all of the parts of you that at one point got split and got separated from you back into the whole. And so for you, uh, looking at all of the things, like pay attention to your triggers. Anything out there in the world that's triggering you is a dead giveaway that there it's an opportunity for parts work. Whatever that is, a person is triggering you. Something somebody said triggered you. You saw an Instagram post and it triggered you. It doesn't really matter. All of those triggers, all of the things that get you outside of your Zen zone are dead giveaways that there's a part in there or somewhere that needs to be claimed. Another thing that is extremely important for a nine is a spiritual pilgrimage. A spiritual pilgrimage is a calling that you get. Like you just like, you need to go. Like um, it's like one day you wake up and it's like an obsessive thought of like, I must travel to a place. Whatever that place is, it's like calling your name. And it could be more than one, by the way, throughout your life. Usually because you have had all of these prep incarnations before our life path nine, you have already come or you came to planet Earth before. And so parts of you have shattered or have gotten split in different aspects, a different um, locales within planet Earth. And so Life Path 9 is a means of bringing all of that together. And so some places, geographical spots on the map that contain a lot of your personal energy are going to be calling your name whenever you're ready to reconnect with those energies. So for you, it is extremely important to pay attention to those places and the calling that you get to travel someplace and treat it as a sacred ritual. Don't just travel there. Have an intention to reconnect with your old energies. Have a commitment to walk the walk, right? Not just talk the talk. And you would be surprised what comes back. Part of the challenge of number nine is to accumulate all of those things, all of your power, all of your strength, all of your energy that has been split into shards and pieces back into oneness. Yeah, and and until that happens, you may feel like parts of your chunks of you are missing, or despite the fact that you are energetic compared to other people, you may still feel that compared to your own inner bar, 
somehow your energy levels are suboptimal, right? Um, and that's why, I, I mean, I got, you got to love the nine because they are that perfectionist. They are that uh, person that, again, would just not stop at medio- mediocre. Another challenge for number nine is settling. You are not meant to settle. If you find yourself settling for a relationship that is not amazing, a career path that you don't love, or you know, a friendship that is suboptimal, Anytime you feel like you get less than you deserve, that is not your path. A nine is not here to settle. Nine is here to trailblaze. The nine is here to show the way. The nine is here to walk the walk with their head held high and never settle. So the moment you catch yourself settling, realize that you are robbing yourself of something that is truly yours by settling for something that is not. And so challenge yourself to get outside of your comfort zone. And that's another thing for uh, for eight, uh, for nine, sorry, is getting outside of your comfort zone. So despite the fact that you've been there and done that, usually before you can complete the cycle, the one thing that is needed from you is a leap of faith. And usually in your life, there are at least three leap, leaps of faith or three leap, leap of faith moments. And, you know, hindsight is always 20, 20. And looking back at your life, you know, you would be able to tell exactly what those leap, leap of faith, leaps of faith were. Um, and so very often a nine has to pass through tests and trials and tribulations. And very often it has to do with a big life choice. So you're in, in your incarnation going to have three points in time where you are going to be asked to drastically change something or make a choice that is meaningful. And you either make that leap and seize the opportunity and and go for what you want, or you settle, or you hold back, or you don't take a leap. And very often for the nine, it's extremely important to take the leap, right? So be courageous, invite the opportunity in, don't cave in, don't settle, don't sell yourself short. If you are a nine, you are here for a reason, you are here for a purpose, and you can impact the world, you can impact society um, on a grander scale, right? So you're not meant to live a small life. You're always meant to shine the light. In some ways, for some people, how you live your life is very visible. That is another thing for the nine, because a nine is like a blueprint. It builds a blueprint for other people to follow. And whether that is for a smaller group of, you know, your family members, your siblings, or what have you, or like a larger group, of society, you tend to be the role model without even knowing it. It may not, you may not be the role model in every area of your life, but very often you are a role model in at least one areas of your life. And that is why it is even more so important for you to not settle. Because if you settle and sell yourself short and then other people emulate your behavior, arguably the world is not going to be better off for it, right? And so understand that you carry the torch uh, of responsibility and strength. And you are helping build the future. And so many other people are going to walk in your footsteps, right? So it is good to have a high bar. You came here, you meant to have a high bar. So never settle and never give up. And remember that you are a master in the making. And this is not meant to be an easy life. And you chose it that way. And so whenever that next leap of faith comes through or comes up in your life, Remember that you are always meant to jump. You were born for it. That is your birthright. Your birthright is to always hit a higher target, to always be evolving, always be kind of like ahead of the curve. And so you're such a beautiful life path and, you know, um, more power to you. Um, You came here to shine and I'm sending you a big virtual hug and so much love. And just remember how amazing you are. Sometimes you need a reminder because you tend to be a little bit harsher on yourself. And I I would say the biggest self-care tactic for you is waking up in the morning and reminding yourself just how great you are and how special you are. Alrighty, my darlings. Well, this is it. Thank you for being with me for this dive, deep dive into life path number nine. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.